This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good evening, Rabbi Isai. Bruchem Abam. Welcome to the opening shear of Sefer Shemais. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Sefer Shemais is a very important uh, Sefer. As we discussed uh, when we were learning Sefer Bereshis, Sefer uh, Bereshis is the book of seeing, Re'iyah, and Sefer Shemais is the book of Shemia, of listening. Mm-hmm. And actually, Reb Rafi composed the whole list of examples of where we see in Sefer Shemais Shemia. We'll see if we're able to come to that this year. The, uh, the Shurim on Sefer Shemais are sponsored by the Zakheim family, Lilo Nishmas, Shleima Eliezer, Ben Harav Yaakov, Zakheim, Zechreinim Levracha. And this week's parsha is sponsored by our good Yadid, Rabbi Shaya Levi, as is chus for him and his mishpacha, and in honor of his dear friend, Rabbi Yaakov Shimshin Hus, Lebracha Latzlacha. Thank you, everybody. And... Um, all the sponsors should be Nisparech, Mishamayim, Bechol Mili, Demetav. Okay, so uh, we're starting Sefer Shemois now, and um, if you don't have your Svarim yet, whether on Rav Meir, or now is a good time to get the Sefer on Pesach, because it has a lot of Shiram on the upcoming Parshios, you could go to our website, rabbidg.com. All the Svarim are on sale. Sale is extended until January 15th. What percent do you have? And, of course, Reb Sander wanted me to point out that the Shurim are also available on podcast and uh, Shas Illuminated. And as a Hashem starting soon, some of the Shurim will be on the Torah Communications Network. Okay, Parshas Shemais. Continuing the theme from Parshas Vayigash. Hungarian, no? I don't speak Hungarian publicly, but privately we could discuss that. Um, Parshas Vayigash, we discussed Malchus. Parshas Vayechi, we discussed Malchus, yeah. and we even discussed on Monday a continuation of that, and we're going to continue this subject. The Pasuk says, Vayehi ki yaru hamiyal doises holeikim, when the midwives, they feared God, vayaslohem batim, so as a reward, God made a houses for them. We know that Paroi decreed, kalaben ha-yiloid hayo'irat ha-shichu. Any child that is born, you have to, any son that is born, you have to throw into the River, because they saw in their astrological signs that the Mashiach Shal Yisrael was going to be born. But out of the fear of God of these Jewish midwives, they saved the Jewish children. Not only did they save the Jewish children, but they, um, they uh, supported them, they fed them, they helped them develop. And as a reward, God made for them houses. What kind of houses? Says Rashi, Bate Kuhuna Olavia Umalchas. They were rewarded with. The, how, the institutions of the priesthood, the institution of the Levites, and the institution of royalty. And all of these institutions are called Batim. As the Pasuk says, Vayiven Espeis Hashem Espeis HaMelech. Kahuna and Levia came from Yecheved, and Malchus came from, from Miriam. How did Malchus come from Miriam? Because Miriam married Kalev. Even though, and Kalev was Kalev ben Yifuna from Shevet Yehuda. We discussed uh, a while ago in the Shir on Yibum how, um, how Malchus came from Kalev. It would seem it came from Kalev's brother. Okay, but be it as it may, let's uh, analyze the first thing. And that is, why was the reward that because they saved the Jewish, Jewish children, they rewarded with Kahuna, Levia, and Malchus? How, what is the appropriateness of this reward? How is this reward quid pro quo? How is it uh, Mida Kenegad Mida? No, what that meant is that Kahuna and Levia came from Yocheved through Aaron and, and Moshe. In other words, because Yocheved saved the Jewish children, they merited that Kahuna and Levia would come from them, and that Malchus would come from Miriam. Why, what is the appropriateness of this reward? So, Hagoin, Reb Yosef Doiv Salavechik, uh, a.k.a. Reb Beryl, said over in the name of his father, the Briskarov, Reb, Reb Velvel, an amazing pshat. He said, this is the most appropriate reward. This reward is what we call quid pro quo, midah k'neged midah. Namely, what were the mitzvahim trying to do? They were trying to kill the Jewish boys. What were they trying to do to the girls? The girls, nothing. The girls would survive and they, they would marry them. Now what would have happened to the Jewish people if the mitzvahim would have been successful in carrying out their plan? Nothing. There would have been a Jewish people. You would have had Egyptian fathers, 
and Jewish mothers, and the children would be uh, Yidolach, nice Jews. So they weren't trying to harm the Jewishness, but instead they were trying to destroy those aspects of Judaism that are of, pa- of patrilineal descent. Namely, Kahuna. Kahuna, if your mother's a Kohenes, it's not going to do you any good. Kahuna, your father has to be a Kohen. And uh, Levia, your, your father has to be a Kohen. And Malchus, your father has to come from the Malchus based David. Come from Yehud. So therefore, what the Mitzvah were trying to destroy was not Judaism per se, but rather those institutions that follow patrilineal descent. So, and the um, Yochev and Miriam saved and rescued and preserved Kahuna, Levia, Malchus, those institutions of patrilineal descent. And therefore, they in fact were rewarded that Kahuna and Levia came from, Yochevet and Malchus came from Miriam. So what are we learning? That the merit for Malchus had uh, been accrued and had been gained and garnered all the way in Egypt. So now we come to one of the great all-time individuals, in fact, the greatest all-time individual, and in his first encounter with the Almighty, and he sees a bush that is burning, and he wonders... Why does the bush not burn? The bush is not being consumed. And if you happen to be making Shavar Brachas this week, it's a good word to say over. Yes. Okay. So, I'm going to say it? On the 17th. On the 17th, I'm invited? If you invite me on the camera, it's hard to say yes, no, yes. you know? Okay. With the Revson. With the Revson. That I can't discuss on the camera. But, uh, okay. Um, so here we have Moshe Rabbeinu was um, approaching this sna. And what does God say to Moshe? If you look at number four, al tikrav haloim. Do not approach here. Shal na'alech Take off your shoe from on your foot. Ki amakam ashata oimed alav. The place that you're standing on. Ad mas koidashu. It's holy ground. Says the holy Gemara Masech Tezvachim on daf kuv beiz. Okay. Amar Ula. Ula said, Bikesh Moshe Malchus. Moses wanted royalty. V'loi nasna And God said no. Dechsev, it says in the Pasuk, Al tikrav haloim, do not come haloim here. Ve'en haloim ela malchus. And emar, mi anoichi Hashem lo ikim ki havi yisani ad haloim. Who am I God? That you brought me here. That's what David HaMelech said when Shmuel proclaimed him as the king. Actually, excuse me, when Nasan Hanavi said he would be the next king of Israel, David HaMelech said, Who am I that you brought me at Haloim? So we see Haloim refers to Malchus. So if Hashem told Moshe, Al Tikrav Haloim, don't come here, what God was saying is, Don't come here, don't go there, Moshe. Moshe, I know you want to be the Melech, don't go there because I can't give it to you. Says the Gemara, Masav Rava. Rava asked Rabbi Shmuel, Aimeh, Rabbi Shmuel said, Yevama Melech. Her sister in law was the king. Meaning, this, the Gemara earlier was talking about Elisheva, right, Rabbi Nassan? And after that, um, it says, okay, um, it was talking about Elisheva, and Elisheva's brother in law was the king. How's that? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was Elisheva's brother-in-law, and Moshe was a king. In fact, if you look at number, um, look at number 10, the Rambam Paskins and Hilchos Beis HaBechiro, you cannot add on to the holy city of Jerusalem or the Azarois, only if you have a king, only if you have a prophet, only if you have Urim Betumim, and only if you have a Sanhedrin of 71. And I, so how did Moshe Rabbeinu do it? Moshe was a melech. So the Gemara is asking, what do you mean God, Moshe asked to be a melech and God said no? He is a king, Moshe Rabbeinu is a king, Moshe Rabbeinu is a melech. So the Gemara says, even though he's a king, he was a king, but he wanted his children to be a king, and God said no, only you could be a king, your children can't be a king. What made him a king? What, what, what kind of, he was a king over who? He was the king over the Jewish people. He was the king. Who made him? The Jew, who made, who proclaimed Moshe the king? We'll have to see. Who made Moshe the king? I didn't do it. How do you know? Okay, so the Gemara asks, I shol, it says, haloim, haveyoid haloim, ish, and 
His children were not a king. Says the Gemara, yeah, Ishbosheth was a king. Or, Bechlau Shalomelch is not a raya because Shalomelch himself lost the Malucha. Because he had some type of arrogance and Hashem took it away from him, so there's no kasha about Shalomelch. So the bottom line is this Gemara says Moshe Avena wanted to be a Melech. He said, God, can I be a king? And God said, Eno. Loi mitin alef. You can't be the king. How do we know Moshe Avena wanted to be a king? It says the word Haloim, and Haloim is Malchus. By the way, where else in Tanakh do we have the word Haloim? And Haloim means Melech. We have in Rus, Goishi Haloim. Goishi Haloim, come here. Bayaz tells Rus, come here, meaning your kings are going to come from you. So Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin, who was uh, the great Rav in Yushalayim, one of the most brilliant all time minds, he has two versions of this, but he wants to know where do we see in the conversation between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Moshe that Moshe wanted to be a Melech. I mean, just because you have the word Haloim, are there any more of a clue, is there any more indication that Moshe wanted to be a king more than the word Haloim? So Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin says an amazing pshat. Ready for this pshat? God tells Moshe, Vayoyimer al tikrav Haloim. Shal ne'olecha me'al raglecha. Take off your shoe from on your foot. Okay, Marva Rabbi let's make a little experiment. Who here is young and strong? Stand up. No, but you, you, let's go. Well, one person. I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. Young and strong. Azriel, stand up. Azriel, go for it. Ready? Go for it. Come on. Come on, come on. Can you take off your shoe, you standing on, stand on one leg and take off your other shoe? Could you do that? Slip on the ties. Yeah, no, no, no. Slip on is fine. They didn't have ties no, right now. You can't do it. Anybody, anybody could do that? No. Standing on one foot, taking off your other shoe. No? No one? Ira could do it, but he's not going to do it publicly. What? No, no. You stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. Stand, go for it, Rafi. Let's go. Without holding on to anything. Yeah. No, no, no. With, well, you could touch it, but without toppling over. So Rafael Yair is a young, young, strong man. And he's able to stand on one foot and without toppling over. The Gemara in Chulin says, Yeled ad kama. Until what age are you a Yeled? So the Gemara says, as long as you could stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. Once you can't do that anymore, you're not a Yeled. Yeah? So the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Hanina, they said about Rabbi Hanina, that he was 80 years old, and he could stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. Which indicates typically an 80 year old is not able to stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. It was a special chilish, the Rabbi Hanina was able to stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. But typically you need to be a young guy to stand on one foot and take off the other shoe. How old was Moshe Rabbeinu when God told him to take off his shoes? Moses was 80 years old. Right? Moshe was 80 when he stood before Pari. So Moshe Rabbeinu then, for all um, intensive purposes, could not remove one shoe standing on one foot. So how is Holy Moses going to s- take off his shoes? Now even though you'll say Moshe Rabbeinu was a gibar, yeah. but it says Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin, that's later. When he, when he, uh, when he started when going he into full action. Yeah, but right now, we don't know for sure that he's going to... So that means Moshe Rabbeinu, if he's going to take off his shoes, he probably had to sit down. Why is he standing on one foot? Oh, because how else are you going to take, take off your shoe? <laughs> you mean to sit down. Yeah. So you say, Moshe will sit. Here's the thing. Hashem said, take off your shoe because you're standing on Admas Kodesh, which means it has Kedusha. Now in a holy place, like the Azara, you're not allowed to sit down. There's Halacha. Ain... Yeshiva ba'azara ela lemalchus beis David bolvad. The Gemara says in Mesechta Yuma on Daf Chaf Hey, number eight. Amar Mar in Yeshiva ba'azara ela lemalchus beis David bolvad. So Moshe Rabbeinu comes to a holy place. He knows he has to take off his shoe. He's eighty years old. He can't do what we just did. He has to. He has to sit down. So he wants to sit down, but he's not allowed to sit down because Ain Yeshiva Bazar El Malchus Beis David. So that's 
That, that's where we see Moshe Rabbeinu asked to be a melech, because he wanted to be able to sit and take off his shoe, and Hashem said, sorry, I'm not going to give you melechus, you're going to have to leave the area, sit down, uh, evacuate the area, and sit down over there, and then come back. In other words, how do we see that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted malchus? Because Moshe Rabbeinu needed to take off his shoe. And you can't take off your shoe if you're 80 years old, unless you're sitting, and you're not to sit unless you're a melech. So implicit in this conversation is, Moshe Rabbeinu is asking God, you want me to be the leader, you want me to be the navi, you want me to be a kayin, you want me to be everything, so I want to be a melech. And God said no. I, Moshe, was a melech, his children weren't. Okay, this is how Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin learns the sugi on Zvachim of where we see that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to be a melech because in order to take off your shoes you need to sit in order to, right, only Mr. Rogers could stand on one foot and take off his other shoe. And this wasn't the Azara. What? Ah, uh, even though this wasn't the Azara. But Rabbi Shua Leib, good question. Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin says it was a holy place and wherever the Shechina reveals itself it's Asr Benila Sasandal and therefore Moshe Rabbeinu was now at a sit, like in a holy place, and uh, must be he was asking to be a melech. This is the Shak Levitaria according to Rabbi Shua Leib Diskin. Comes, Koen Gadol couldn't sit in the Azara? Koen Gadol could not sit in the Azara. No. Now there was a Koen Gadol who did sit in the Azara, his name was Eli HaKoyin, and we're going to come to that. Now, Mar Rabbi say, what? Moshe Rabbeinu was considered the biggest Anav that ever lived. Moshe Rabbeinu was a very big Anav. Guess who else was an Anav? David. But David was a king. You could be a king and you could be an Anav. It's not a stira. You could be humble and someone could insult you and you could overlook it and if someone starts up with your Malchus, you kill him. That's the dichotomy of Malchus Yisrael. But here is the million dollar question of the evening. And this comes from the Sefer, Chavat Selas Hasharon, courtesy of Reb Gedalia Schwartz. Thank you where he asks the following question. The Gemara says, Ein yeshiva ba'azara el alamalchus beis David bovad. So, ask the Chavaz HaSasharon. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to sit. And in order to sit, you have to be a melech. So the question is, Moshe was a melech. We just quoted from the Rambam. The Rambam said, Moshe Rabbeinu was a king. So what's the problem? Moshe Rabbeinu says, I want to sit. God says, you have to be a king. Moshe should have said, I'm a king. I am a king. So why couldn't Moshe sit? What's the problem? Why? Just because his children weren't a king, therefore you can't sit? I thought a king is allowed to sit. Who cares what status your children have? Moshe was a melech. If he's a melech, he should be allowed to sit. Furthermore, the Gemara says, Ein yeshiva ba'azara, el alamachos beis David balvad. There's no sitting in the azara unless you're a king of the Davidic line. Which Moshe wasn't. So Moshe wasn't. What was he even asking for? Miman of shach. If a regular king could sit in the Azara, then Moshe should have been allowed to sit. So what was God's answer? Elamai, you have to be from the Malchus based David. So was Moshe asking? He's not from the Malchus based David. Ah. So, good. Wasn't Amram a king? Wasn't he like a Nazi, a king? Amram? No. What was he? He was the head of the... What was Amram? Yeah. A chash of a yid. He was the father of Moshe. He but never did Navera. The, the wife of Yecheved. Uh, wasn't he like the top, uh, top gun? He could be the top gun. It doesn't mean you're the Melech. Rav Moshe Feinstein was the God of Adar. He wasn't the Melech. You know? No, but he was, he was the one that everybody looked up to. Him, no? But he wasn't a Melech. Yeah, so... Okay. Rabasi is saying, and this is what I was uh, thinking... Um, Based on the Arachayim HaKadosh and Parshas Vayechi that we quoted last week, that we have on the sheet number 23, Arachayim HaKadosh says, that Arachayim HaKadosh learns that the bracha to Yehuda, Yehuda, Ata Yeducha Achecha, Yadcha Ba'erf Ha'evecha, Yishtacha Vulecha B'nei Avicha, Gur Ari Yehuda, right? The bracha to Yehuda, the Arachayim HaKadosh learns, part of it is, was fulfilled in the times of Moshe, and part of it in the times of Mashiach. As Arachayim HaKadosh, how could I explain the Pasuk partly in the times of Moshe and partially in the times of Mashiach? Says our Chaim HaKadosh, Moshe was the Goyal that redeemed our forefathers and he is going to redeem us in the future. Moshe was the Goyal Rishon, Moshe will be Mashiach, the Goyal Achron. That is the Shita of the Archaim HaKadosh. Moshe Rabbeinu will be Mashiach. 
The Remez is Moshe stands for Ma Shahoya Hu Shayya Rosh Tevas Moshe. I, we know Melch Mashiach has to be Yehuda from the descendants of David, and some say even David himself. Mm-hmm. Says Yerach Chaim HaKadosh, you need to know that the Bechina of the Neshama of Moshe incorporates and encompasses and overarching is the general category of all of Klal Yisrael and all 12 tribes. He is the encompassing element of all 600,000 Jews and in Anaf of the Shevet of David is in Moshe, and that's how Moshe could be a Melech, and a Koyen, and a Levi, and a Navi, and a Chacham, and a Gibar. He had the Gevura of, of uh, Yehuda, he had the Gevura of Don, he had the Kahuna of Levi, he had the Leviya of Levi, he had the Nevua, he had the Chachma, and the Asad Lavai, the Shoresh of the Malchus in Moshe, will be revealed that he himself is Mashiach, that is the opinion of the Archaim HaKadosh. In that case, Moshe comes from Shevet Levi. But in that case, Moshe Rabbeinu could make the claim, at least on some kind of spiritual level, that he is somehow encompassing Malchus based David. And in that case, Moshe Rabbeinu could make the claim and make the request, Moshe wanted Malchus. He could, he could ask to sit. I, only the Malchus based David, could sit. Moshe Rabbeinu is from the Malchus based David. However, the question then would be, and what's God's answer? God said, no. What do you mean, no? God said, your children won't be a king. So what? His children won't be a king. But Lamaisa, Moshe Rabbeinu is from the Malchus based David. So what difference does it make that Moshe's children were not a king? Now there's a very interesting Sefer on Chumash that we've never featured in number 11. Masas Hamelech of Reb Shimon Diskin, I believe. And he asks a very interesting question. He asks that he wants to prove that the din of Ein Yeshiva Ba'azara El Malchus based David is not a phenomenon that only exists in the Malchus based David, but perhaps any king would be allowed to sit in the Azara. And he proves it. He says like this. The din of Ein Yeshiva Azara El Elamachus based on Bavad means that you could only sit in the Azara if you have the Iker Malchus. If the primary Malchus rests in your hand, you could sit in the Azara, whether you're from Malchus based David or not. It's just that primary Malchus happened to have been given to David, and therefore the Malchus from based David, the Malchay based David, could sit in the Azara. But if Malchus was given to Moshe, then Moshe could have sit in the Azar. It's just that Malchus was not given to Moshe. Now I would have said that Malchus, that perhaps Moshe Rabbeinu could have sat in the Azar because he did come from the Malchus based David, but we're going to see it's not enough, it seems, to come from the Malchus based David. It has to be that the Iker Malchus was given to you and that is defined by do you pass it on to your children. We may tweak that a little bit later in the shir. And the Masas Hamelech brings the following raya. What was the Malchus based David? In Moshe Rabbeinu's time. So what? 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 what but um, well, I will. I will say that we've quoted uh, often, many, many times, the last couple of weeks, the Shla Hakadosh. And your homework last week was to read, or two weeks ago was to read in the English book about the Shla's comments on why the brothers wanted to sell Yosef because they held he was starting up with Yehuda, who was the Patriarch of the Malchus based David. Yeah. So apparently, according to the Shlad, there was a concept of Malchus based David going back to the Shvatim. That even Yehuda had some kind of status of, of the Malchus based David. But I want to share with you Gemara and Sanhedrin number 18 on your sheet, Daf Kuf Aleph Amid Beis. Who's your outside? Really? Sanhedrin Kuf Aleph Amid Beis. The Gemara says the arrogance of Yeravam drew, uh, drove him out of this world. Like it says, now we know Yeravam split up the Malucha from who? Any Jewish people in the audience who might know? Um, what? Yeravam split up the Malucha from Shlomo's son, Rechavam. And he said as follows. He says, if the people go up and they want to start bringing Karbonus and Yushalayim, then uh, pe- people's heart are going to turn back to Rechavam, the king of Yehuda. So he was very weary 
that if the Jewish people go to be Oile Regal, they're going to uh, return their allegiance to the Malchi based of it. And if they do that, they're going to kill me, says Yeravam said. So, he said, I have a, there's a tradition. What I could do is I could go sit in the Azara, and sitting in the Azara means you're the Melech. However, there's a, a tradition, and Rashi says it's Halach HaLamay Sinai, which by the way, Rashi elsewhere in Shas says um, something else. We have a tradition, Ein Yeshiva Ba'azara Ela Lamalche Beis Yehuda Bolvad. Now that's a different Lashon than we find anywhere else in Shas. Everywhere else in Shas, in Saita, in Yuma, in Chulin, we have a concept in Yeshiva Bazar El Amalchus Beis David Bovad. Here it says El Amalchus Beis Yehuda Bovad. So says Yerachavim, if I go up to the temple, says Yerachavim, if I go up to the temple, and Rechavim is sitting and I'm standing, they're going to say, he's the Melech and I'm the Eved. And what are they going to do to me? They're going to say, I'm Moirid B'malch, uh, they're, and uh, they're going to say, I'm a nobody. Elam, I have a great idea. I'll sit down next to him. So he says, then I'll be a Moirid B'malchus, and they're going to kill me. Yeah. And they're going to follow Yerachavam. So he gave the following advice. He set up calves in the north, and they said, from now on, you don't go to the temple. From now on, we have our uh, place of worship up here, our Agolim, our Egal, and he stopped the people from being Oile Regal, and he put sentries on the road, and he made sure the soldiers made sure people didn't go to Yushalayim. But let's think about what this Gemara said. Rechava, Yeravam said, if we go to the temple, and Rechavam is sitting, and I'm standing, then they're going to say I'm an Eved. And if I sit, they're going to say I'm a Moirid B'malchus. Ask the Masas HaMelech. I don't understand. If they see Rechavam sitting and I'm standing, why are they going to say I'm an Eved? Everyone knows I'm the Melech of Israel, And there's a din. Only the Melech of the Malchus Beis David could sit and not any other king. So why would anybody say I'm an Eved? They're not going to say I'm an Eved. There's a din. There's Xeris HaKosah. There's Allah Chalmash Mishina. You've got to come from David to sit in the Azorah. So they're not going to say I'm an Eved. They're just going to know I'm not from the Malchus Beis David. Furthermore, if Yeravam Yeravim said, if I sit, they're going to say, I'm Moirid B'malchus. Why do they say, I'm Moirid B'malchus? How am I Moirid B'malchus? I'm just violating a halacha, that if you're not from the Malchus based of it, you're not allowed to sit. I'm not, I'm not a Moirid B'malchus. Says the Masas HaMelech from this Gemara, we see a, a tremendous Yisoid. Sitting in the Azara is not only to the Malche based of it. Not only kings from the Davidic dynasty are allowed to sit. Any Melech who is the primary leader of the Jewish people. Any Melech who has the primacy of Malchus is allowed to sit. Any Melech whose Malchus is not primary is not allowed to sit. So he said, if, if Yeravim if is sitting and I'm not sitting, they're, they're going to say, I'm a nobody. They're going to say, my Malchus is not primary. They're going to say, he has the primacy of Malchus and I don't. El Amai, I'm going to sit, then I'm, I'm being murdered by Malchus. Because I'm saying I also have primary malchus, and they're going to say that's a challenge to Rechavam's malchus. So now, says the Master Samach, we understand how Moshe Rabbeinu could ask to sit in the Azara. I, he's not from the malchus based David. So again, we would say maybe he is. But says the uh, Master Samach, he was allowed to ask for malchus because he had the primacy of Jewish leadership. He was the primary Melech of Kal Yisrael. And the answer God said to him is, Sorry, Moshe, you can't sit because since your malchus will not be passed on to future generations, you are not ikaron shal malchus. In other words, we see from this Gemara that the din ein yeshiva ba'azara el alamalche based on Belvad is not specific to the malchus based David. We see that Yeravam said, If I sit, if I stand, they're going to think I'm, a, I'm an Eved. What do you mean? Everybody knows you're not from Malchus based David. Clearly, you don't have to be from Malchus based David to sit. He said, if I sit, people are going to think I'm more Malchus. Why? You're just violating the Halacha. No, in order to sit, you have to be Ikaran Shal Malchus. And this explains and answers the Chavetzal Sasharon's question that, again, we of Shach. Moshe was a Melech. Elamai, he's not from Malchus based David. What was he asking for? The answer is he was asking because even though he, he was a Melech, 
but he felt he had the primacy of Malchus and he has the right to sit, and Hashem says it won't go to your children. The, the concept of not being allowed to sit in the Azorah, unless you're a Melech, should only apply in Eretz Yisrael. It does. Um, so what, what, what does that have to do with But it Eretz? seems like anywhere the Shechina is... The Shechina is, is it all over the world, it's everywhere. No, it's not. No. Shabbat was everywhere. No, he's not. Why not? Ask him. He's everywhere. Oh, Speak to him. The Shechina is not everywhere. Not the Shechina is only when there's a minion. And then uh, the so Shechina... The Shechina was in the Midbar over the Jews protecting them. Uh, they weren't allowed to sit down. <coughs> the Midbar did not necessarily have the status of the... Uh, the Shechina was protecting them. It's only Mamish Admas Kodesh. They didn't have to take off their shoes in the, in the Midbar. Okay, now this din, Rabbi Yisai, this din... That ain't yeshiva ba'azara el alamalchus b'zdav bilvad. There's a very interesting Mishnah lamalach. Look in the Rambam in number twelve. The Rambam says in Hilchos b'zdav b'chira parak zayin halach avav aser l'chol adam leishe b'chol azara. You can't send the azara. Ve'in yeshiva ba'azara lamalchay b'zdav b'zdav bilvad. Shenemar and David came and he sat before God. I the Sanhedrin sat in the uh, lishka sagozus. They sat in the chulin part of the lishka sagozus. They didn't sat in the, sit in the holy part of the lishka sagozus. The Mishnah Lamelech wants to know, is this prohibition of sitting in the, in the Azara, is it a Dinda Iraisa or is it a Dinda Rabbanon? Now Rashi, we just saw in Sanhedrin number 19, says it's Halach Lamei Sinai. Rashi in Yuma, and Daf Chafhe, and Daf Samach Tesma Beis says, it comes from a Pasuk. La Moid Ula Shareis Ha'oyim Dim Sham Lefnei Hashem. So that means it's not Halach Lamei Shem Yisani, it's learned out of a Pasuk. The Mishnah Melch says, you could say that these psukim are just asmachta ba'alma. However, Rashi in Soita says something very interesting. Look at number 17. Rashi in Soita says, you can't sit in the Azara because it's not covered shamayim to sit in the Azara. Even the angels don't sit in the Azara or in the presence of God. Only to the Malchus based David, why God gives them honor that to show that their malchus is shlema. Now, says the Mishnah Lamelech, Rashi, who says it's not covered shemaim to sit, is mashma, that it's only a din because Rashi is saying it's a svara. It's not, a Rashi is saying that it's not covered for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So, that implies that it's only a din If it was a din raisa, Rashi wouldn't have to give a svara. However, he could say that Rashi is just giving a logic of why the, ta- the Torah asers it, because from the end of Rashi, that Hashem gives honor to the Malchus based of it, that implies that there, it's a dinda iraisa. However, says the Mishal Melech, L'chayra you could approve that it's a dinda iraisa from the fact that the Gemara in Kedushin says that even Shmuel did not sit down in the Azara. Why? Ein yeshiva ba'azara el el Malchus based of it v'vad. Now, if it was a Dindar Abanan, why in the world would Shmuel be bound by a Dindar Abanan? Maybe they, they, the Dindar Abanan was not issued yet. So that implies it was a Dindar Iraisa. Okay. What do the words Shabisi Hashem and Nekisom mean? I place God before me always. So it means He's always in front of us. But doesn't the Shechina is not everywhere? In Yeshul, you see that on the Aaron Kaidish. Shabisi Hashem and Nekisom. That's it. Okay, but if there's no minion, the Shechina ain't there. You can't lane. It's only with the minion. Yeah, or even if there is a minion, people are talking, you also can't lane. You chase out the Shechina. So, Shechina's not everywhere. Shechina, you, the Gemara says, 10 people bring the Shechina, 22,000 people bring the Shechina, 600,000 bring the Shechina. So there are many levels of Shechina. The Stipler writes, there are many, many levels of Shechina. Now, this is also very interesting. Because if you look at number 20 in the Malay Haroyim, the Gemara learns out, Ein Yeshiva Ba'azara from Eli HaKoyen, who Eli HaKoyen would sit in the Azara and nobody else was allowed to. So the Malay Haroyim asked, what, is, what in the world was Eli HaKoyen doing? He wasn't from the Malchus based David. He was from the, uh, he was a Koyen Gadol. So here is where you could say slightly different than the Masas HaMelech. The Masas HaMelech says that sitting in the Azara is lav davka to the Malchus based David, 
But you have to have, you have to be Iker HaMalchus, and Yeruvam was not Iker HaMalchus, and if he would have said, it would have been a Merida B'Malchus. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to be Iker HaMalchus, and God said, you're not. Now that's a little bit difficult to understand, that Moshe Rabbeinu was not Iker HaMalchus, so who was more Iker HaMalchus than Moshe Rabbeinu? But you could say a little differently. If you look at Rashi in Soita number 17, why are the Malchus based, Malchus based David allowed to sit? Laharois, it's a honor that God gives them to show them Shemalchusoi Shlema, that their Malchus is complete. Says the Malay Harayim, once there were kings in the Jewish people from the Malchus based David, then only the kings of Yehuda, of the Malchus based David, had a Malucha which was Shalem. But the truth is, before King David was selected, anyone could have been the king. Look at number five, uh, 14. In Divrei Hayama, we have the Pasuk, Haloi Lachem Ladas, you should know. Hashem Aleikei Yisrael Nasan Mamlacha LaDavid, God, the, the God of Israel, gave dominion to David Al Yisrael LaOilam. Loi Ulevanov Bris Melach, it's a covenant of salt. Says the Rambam, once David was anointed, he was Zoycha to Keser Malchus. And the Malchus is for him and his children and his grandchildren forever and ever, but only to Kesherim. Someone who's not worthy cannot be a Melech. But even if they're not worthy, the Malchus still rests in the family. However, says the Mechilta, look at number 16, before David was selected, all Yisrael was kosher to be the Melech. Now I believe that this does not work out with the Shla Kadesh that we've quoted all the weeks. That the reason why the brothers sold Yosef is because they felt Yosef was usurping the Malchus based David. Why can't he usurp the Malchus based David? According to the Mechotah, before David was selected, anyone could be the Melech. Uh, the the, the Mechotah says, Ad Shalai Nivchar David, how you call Yisrael Kesherim, La Malchus, Misha Nivchar David. Yatsu kol Yisrael, shenemar haloi lachem ladas ki Hashem aleikei Yisrael nasen as hamam lachel David. See, I would have said that all of Klal Yisrael from Shevet Yehuda would be Roy Lamalchus, because once uh, once Yaakov Avinu said lo yaser Shevet mi Yehuda, perhaps Malchus could only come from Yehuda, and then it could have been anyone. And then David was selected. But the bottom line is, says the Malay Arayim, before King David was selected, then the Eliya Koyen, who was Miyuchad Shebi Be'am, he was the choicest of all Kla Yisrael, he could have sat in the Azara, which he did, because he had a wholesome, a shalem dominion over the Jewish people. I, the Melech, no, the Melech was not allowed to sit. Uh, there was no Melech. However, interestingly, once David HaMelech was selected, then only David HaMelech was uh, the Meyuchat Shabbat and even Yeruvam, who was a legitimate Melech by Yisrael, he was a king, he wasn't allowed to sit. Why? Because Mal- his Malchus was not Shalem. I believe this is a little bit of a different nuance than what the Masas HaMelech is saying. Masas HaMelech is saying that who could sit? Someone who is Ikaran Shal Malchus. So then why can't, couldn't Moshe sit? Moshe wasn't Ikaran Shal Malchus. But if you say it a little bit differently, maybe this is what he means, the only person who could sit is someone whose Malch- Malchus is Sholem. Only if your Malchus is complete are you allowed to sit. Now, was, now oh, what does that mean complete? So I would say, quant- uh, qualitatively, and... What? So, Yeruvam couldn't sit because uh, he, he was challenged by, by Rechavam. He understood that Rechavam is the Melech of Yehuda. So he, he knows he can't sit. If he sits, it's going to be Marie de Bamalchus. We're going to come to that soon. But Moshe Rabbeinu could be his Malchus, was not Sholem. In other words, we asked, why could Moshe said he was a Melech? So it's not going to go to his children. So what? It could be that's a lack in the Shlemus of his Malchus. A Malchus Shlema is something that is, uh, is hereditary. It's in the DNA. It will get passed on to the next generation. The only time you can have Malchus over Menei is when there is Eretz Yisrael. 
True. How could he want to be a melech when there was no Eretz Yisrael? Well, he was the melech. I mean, uh, the Rambam's... You couldn't even enter Eretz Yisrael. True, but the Rambam, look at number 10. How could he be a melech? He was, I don't know, you know. Melech could only exist when you have Eretz Yisrael. Apparently not. Was there ever any other king when Jews were not in Eretz Yisrael? Was there ever some Malchus? Anywhere? Yehuda. Where? Goshen. I know about Baruch. I thought Malchus could only have Eretz Yisrael. But Moshe was a Melech. I mean, by Yibi Shurun Melech, the Ramban says it refers to Moshe. Now, Mar Rabbi watch this. According. Well, the Rashi says that in Masechta Sanhedrin. By the way, the Master Samalch says that since sitting is not specific to the Machos based David, but it's anyone who has Ikar and Shamachos, that's why in Sanhedrin the Lashon is Ein Yeshiva Zar El Amacha Yehuda, because it's not specific to the Machos based David. But according to what we're learning, yeah. it, the reading of the Psukim in, in Shmuel, by the way, there's a book called Sefer Shmuel, one of the Neviim. That's a part of the Torah, which God gave to the Jewish people, the Nevi'im. Um, he says like this, Nasan Hanavi comes to David. He says, Ani I will be to you as a father. Meaning this God is saying, I will be to Solomon as a father. And he will be to me as a son. By the way, that there's a chapter on this Pasuk that... Um, Building the base Hamikdash gains you the status of being a Ben. This is one of the things that you become a Ben for. Okay, so God says, V'chazdi lo yasur. Mimenu, I will not remove my kindness from him. Like I removed the Malchus from Shaul. V'neman beischa. Your house will be Neman. It will be trustworthy. It will be stable. Umamachta Your sovereignty will be forever. Your throne will be firm forever. And by the way, the Rambam quotes this Pasuk in Hilchus Malachim, Parakav Halachas number 15, to indicate that once David was selected, it belongs to him forever. This is what David was told by Nasan. What's the first thing David does when he's told that not only is he a king, but the reign will continue in his descendants? What's the first thing David does? David David comes to the Azara and he sits down. What does he say? God, Who am I, God? Who is my house? That you brought me to Haloim. What took David so long to sit? He was always a king. It's just now he's being told that it would continue to Shlomai. What took David so long? He stood until now. Avada he stood until now. Because until now, in Malchus Shlema. He was like Moshe Rabbeinu, who was a Melech, but it wouldn't continue to his descendants. So he wasn't allowed to sit. Moshe wanted Malchus Shlema. How do we see Moshe wanted Malchus Shlema? Because he wanted to take off his shoe, and he couldn't take off his shoe because he's 80 years old, so he has to sit, so he wants to be a Melech. And God said, no, it's only to you and not to your children. It's not Shlema. But when David HaMelech is told that the Malchus will continue to Shlema, the first thing David does to solidify and recognize his wholesome Malchus is he has a seat. Because Ein Yeshiva Ba'azara Malchus based David Bovad. And he says, you wanted to know, but how could you be a king and have humility? This is exactly what David is saying. He sits, he claims the mantle of royalty, but he says, who am I that you brought me, Ad Haloim, that you brought me to this great Malchus? Yeah. Now I want to end off with a, a lomdus of the Briska Rav on the Malchus based David. We said that Yeravam was afraid to sit down because it would be construed as a Merida. We asked, why would it be a Merida? It's just a violation of the Halacha that you can't sit unless you're from the Malchus based David. So he said, well, because the only way to sit is if you're the primary king. So if he's sitting, he's claiming he's the primary king. The Lushan that he uses is, they, they are going to kill me. They are going to kill me. Who's they? Why didn't he say, Rechavam is going to kill me? Because after all, question... If somebody goes over to the king and says, King, you have a big nose. He's a Maribah Malchus. 
Is he Chayiv Misa or could the king kill him? The Briskarov says he's not Chayiv Misa, but the king has the authority and the right to king, kill him. Not so, Marie de Bamachos Beis David. Marie de Bamachos Beis David, it says in the Taisefta in Shumais, number 24, and Rashi quotes it in Navi. Reb Shimon Oimer, Kachar, Malahem, Kalah, Moivach, David, Chayiv Misa. If you rebel against the house of David, you're liable to the death penalty from Bezdin. If you rebel against the king, your Mar Bamachas, the king could kill you. It wasn't in Haftoyer, this was but David told, uh, David told Shlomo to go and kill this guy, kill that guy, kill this guy. What? Why? Because it was Merida Bemalchus based David. Yes. Merida Bemalchus based David, you're Chayiv Misa. If you rebel against the king, uh, Melech Yisrael, oh, uh, any other the, king, uh, yeah, any, and if you're a Melech Malchus from Beis David, you have two dinim. One is um, the king could kill you because you're Marib Malchus, and anyone could kill you because you're Marib Malchus based David. By the way, that's how the Shlal learned why the brothers wanted to kill Yosef. They held he was a Marib Malchus based David. So it's interesting, by the way, as an aside, I never said this publicly. Do you remember the shear from the uh, Barbanel? Uh, that we had last Wednesday night, that the whole Birchas Yaakov was really to establish who's, who should be the next king of Israel. It can't be Reuven. Reuven's impetuous. It can't be Shimon and Levi. They have too much of a temper. It's not done. Done ambushes. Not Zavul. And he's a businessman. It comes out beautiful that the Haftarah, Parshas Vayechi, is David on, is on his deathbed and he proclaims that Shloimai will be the, continue the Malchus based David. Because at first glance, the only connection between the Haftarah and Parshas Vayechi is they both begin with Vayikravu Yimei Yisrael Lamas, Vayikravu Yimei David Lamas. But according to Abar Benel, that the whole theme of the Parsha is the establishment of the Malchus based David, so that's the Haftarah, the con- continuation of the Malchus based David through Shloimai. But the Briska Rav says as follows. He says there's a very big nafkamina between Malchus Yisrael and Malchus based David. When one rebels against Malchus Yisrael, you're only a Mar Malchus, the king could kill you. But if you're going to sit in the Azara, and that's, that's designated for the Malchus Beis David, that's not a Mar Malchus, that's a Merida Malchus Beis David, that's why Yeruvim said, they're going to kill me. Anybody could kill me, because I'm Chayiv Misa, because it's a Merida and the Malchus Beis David. So, uh, we've been able to continue this theme uh, into Sefer Shemais, and Bezat Hashem, uh, next week we probably have a little bit of a, a different uh, angle on, on a different Indian. But thank you everyone for joining us. Bracha v'atzlacha. Have an amazing evening and kol tov selah. Thank you so much. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.